Hi, I'm Brugley, or Jared, and this is a very special video on the channel. In fact, I would venture to say it's the most important video that I'm ever gonna make. Yes, I am bald, by the way. Oh, oh, this is my head review. This video is very personal, and it's a huge look into my life, because today I'm gonna be telling you my cancer survival story. So yes, I'm a cancer survivor. I used to look like this. And now I look like that, but with facial hair now. <laughs> I have literally told no one online about this story. Only my friends and family know. So this is a huge leap of faith for me, but I'm doing it online for a great cause. And I'm going to tell you what that is right now. The goal of this video is that I want to inspire at least just one person that watches this entire thing. I want to show people that you can come from absolutely nothing, even, you know, not even having your own health and you can still follow and pursue your passions and do what you want to do. No matter where you come from, what part of the world, your health, your, your financial stability, your family life, you can move past it all and you can become the best version of yourself. And I want my story to be a picture of that. And also, I wanna raise a ton of money for families that are being afflicted and affected by cancer this holiday season. Which is why, for this video, every cent of ad revenue like literally every cent of ad revenue from this video will be automatically donated to the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in order to help out families that are dealing with sickness of cancer in this Christmas season. St. Jude's gives money directly to families to pay for their hospital stays and to purchase things for them for, and for their kids that are sick. It's a very great organization. It's probably one of the best ones. And I'm really, really freaking excited that I get to support and give back in this capacity. You know, this time of year is especially hard for people dealing with cancer because, you know, the holidays is supposed to be a fun and family time of year, but when you see your kid or another family member really sick, it, it kind of dampens the mood a little bit, obviously. So yeah, every cent from this video is going to be donated to St. Jude. As well, I've linked a donate button where you can also donate directly to the same exact charity through this video. It's all done through the video. You don't have to go to any outside things. It's all in the description right there. If you're feeling extra inspired after hearing the story or if you just wanna help people out, you don't have to donate by any means. Just you watching this video is helping because it's boosting the algorithm and it's giving ad revenue sense to the donation goal. But if you wanna give extra and uh, support people in need, then I would encourage you to do so if you can. I just wanna raise a ton of money for these families in need because I myself have been there, obviously, and you're gonna hear about it right now. I'm not gonna blabber on, I'm not gonna draw this video out. I just wanted to get that out of the way so you don't think I'm shilling money or something. Also, I waited to hit a million subscribers to tell this story because I knew that some people would think that I was being a grifter and wanting to get you know sympathy or something like that or just like clout for telling the story. So I hit a million subs without telling anybody, and then I'm gonna tell the story now, <laughs> just so people don't say that. You know, I don't want the haters coming out in droves saying that oh you're clout chasing, oh you you're pulling on the heartstrings. No, I just want to help people, bro. That's literally all I want to do, and I can finally do that. Like this video, share this video to as many people as you can. I want to just get the most opportunity possible to get money to these kids in this in this charity. I want to just raise so much money. This is my this is my passion right here is giving back to where I came from. But with all that out of the way, let's get into my story of surviving leukemia and then dropping out of college and then becoming a YouTuber with almost 2 million subscribers. When I was a little under a three and a half years old, I started to get bruises all over my body. And at first, my parents were just thinking that I was a rough young dude. If you've you know had brothers or if you yourself are rough, you know that kids are they bruise. You know, we, we get into fights, we play on the playground, fall off swings. It's not very uncommon to get bruises, but mine were starting to appear at a alarming rate, you could say. Also, by the way, like I joke about my cancer all the time. Like I don't I'm not one of those people that's like really stuck up or emotional about it. I actually think it's a very funny way to think. I don't know, it might be a coping mechanism or something, but I, I just love joking around with it. It's pretty funny. So if you see me making jokes, it's not me like being you know stupid about it. It's just that I think that's funny. So I hope you do too. After these bruises began to appear more rapidly and become bigger and like greener, my parents kind of got worried. So they ended up taking me to a doctor. Now the first doctor we went to really didn't think anything was wrong. They didn't run tests because I was still kind of normal. I wasn't really showing too many symptoms of a disease or sickness. But even me being three, I still remember 
hurting. Like, I remember being, like, fatigued constantly. And boy, was I fatigued. That's not normal for a three-year-old boy. At some point after this first doctor's appointment, my parents kind of thought something was going on, so they took me to a second doctor for a second opinion. And after just checking me out visually, this sweet doctor uh, recognized the symptoms of leukemia, and she began to run a few blood tests to see what was going on. She ran a few tests with the blood, you know, confirming it like four times, and it came back positive. And this doctor, who I'm not gonna mention, but I love her so much, she came into the room and she told my family, my mom and dad, the news. She told them that I had leukemia. You know, they were obviously shocked and crying and all that stuff, as parents would do when their oldest child just got diagnosed with a deadly disease. But I remember sitting there in the corner of the room on that like hospital table thing and I was like, just kicking my legs like, oh yeah. No. Then they came over to me and they tried to explain that I was sick, but that the doctors were gonna make it all better. And literally the entire time I was like, okay. <laughs> I, like to me, it didn't hit like at that point. It didn't really hit me at all until after. But as far as I knew, I was just sick. My three-year-old brain, almost four, I was like, you know what? I'm just sick. The doctor's gonna fix me right up. I, you know, I trust him. And on that day in late July of 2005, I was diagnosed with pre-B lymphoblastic leukemia, which is a specific form of leukemia. And if you don't know what leukemia is, it is a cancer of the bone marrow and the blood, typically revolving around your white blood cells dying off in mass numbers, your red blood cells getting sickle cell and taking over your body and pretty much you, you're dying internally. That's pretty much what it is. And it was literally on that day that my entire life course and outlook changed. I would not be here if it was not for that experience of getting diagnosed. A few weeks after the diagnosis day, the doctors met with my parents to discuss treatment options, and they ended up falling into a three-year chemotherapy regimen treatment for me, which isn't out of the ordinary, and that's pretty standard. But chemo is literally poison. You know, don't get it mixed. Chemo is quite literally poisonous and it much kills your body so i had to take a bunch of steroids and a bunch of other you know oral medications in order to make my insides not dissolve away as a child now the exact type of cancer that i had had just over 60 percent survival rate so we're, we're batting pretty good odds at this point so you know we're thinking we're, we're chilling and that was back in the early 2000s it's probably much better now but after the treatment was chosen you know we all got that squared away a couple weeks later I did my first round of chemotherapy and the worst possible thing occurred. Quite literally, this is the worst thing that could have happened. My body rejected the chemo. And what I mean by that is that it would not take it in. It simply just made me break out in this huge rash. And when I say rash, I mean, I looked like a leper. It was bad. My skin was like falling off. I had like red veins popping up everywhere. It was kind of weird actually, I'm not even gonna lie. But my body rejected it and the doctors were like, that's not good. So they kind of reworked the treatment plan a little bit and gave me a different kind of chemo. And after that, it was getting a little bit better. My body was still rejecting it, but the rash was going down. I was prescribed this ointment that I had to wipe over my entire body constantly. I was literally in a constant state of looking like an a oiled up pig. Like seriously, it was like Vaseline that was like that thick all over me. It was not fun. And to be honest, that was probably what hurt the worst. That rash, that rash. That hurt pretty bad, man. I still remember that. That was bad. But after the first few oral treatments of chemo, I had to get something called a portacath installed into my chest where it would get, you know, shot directly into that portacath and into my bloodstream. And if you don't know what the port is, if you've ever seen those things that get shoved into people's chest and like a little bump sticks out and there's like a hole in it, that's where the chemotherapy uh, gets put in when you're a kid, when you're an adult. So uh, they had to give, you know, a huge surgery, obviously. It's a, it's a big surgery for a kid. But that size shoved in your chest, and that was really when my memory started to solidify. I remember every single thing after that, and mostly things before it, but it's kind of blurry. But after that surgery, I remember everything. I remember how bad the surgery hurt. You know, I woke up and I was like hyperventilating. I was, you know, f foggy from the laughing gas stuff or whatever. And I was like, my chest hurts pretty bad, man. And after that, it was just business as usual. I took the chemo, my hair fell out, and it never grew back properly. Sh sucks bad. I had to take steroids so the chemo wouldn't, you know, make me wither away. So I ended up getting like really fat. And I have like these pictures of me, my little bald self with like fat rolls. It's hilarious. But after three years of battling cancer, I was diagnosed cancer free after those, you know, three years of chemo treatments. So W's in the chat for that. That was cool. At this point, 
I'm a little under seven. I'm, I'm pretty much seven years old and I just got, you know, officially diagnosed cancer free. You're not in exact remission until 10 years later, but at that point, there was no more cancerous cells on the scans. Throughout the entire journey, my friends, my family, they all were beside me. They literally stuck by my side the entire time. And I'm still literally best friends with those guys that would come visit me in the hospital. Those were my childhood friends when I was like one and two and three. So it was pretty cool that I'm still, you know, they're my brothers. I love I love them to death. I'm, I still hang out with them every day, pretty much. So it's, it's pretty cool to have that. You know, I, I love them so much. My mom and dad, they're awesome. And they, they're so strong and powerful because Literally, I got diagnosed in July of 2005, and a few months later, my sister was born. So they had a, their oldest son, which just got diagnosed with cancer, and then literally a few months into treatment, they had to have a baby, another kid, during when I was had cancer. And on top of that, that was when the recession in the economy was happening. Like the during the Obama administration, it was literally like dogpiling at once. Cancer diagnosis, newborn baby during cancer diagnosis, economic recession during cancer diagnosis, and new kid. It was all bad, but my parents are so powerful. They were so resilient. And even though they, they didn't have any money, they worked multiple shifts, multiple jobs, and, and worked to pay it off because chemo was very expensive. It's like 200 grand or something. They, they went into debt for it, but they did it to save me. I, I, I want to pay it back, and I, I'm trying to right now. It's a story for another day. Fast forward to 2020. This is the year I'm supposed to graduate high school. I'm, I'm a senior in 2020 and some big thing worldwide happened that year. I can't really recall what it was. And my entire year was cut in half. So I didn't have the last latter half of the year. And I went to college. And during this Corona time, I was able to have enough time at home to where I could pursue my passion, which was YouTube more. I could take it seriously. I didn't have any extracurriculars, didn't have school, but from 2020 to 2021, I was grinding YouTube. And later in 2021, it paid off. It blew up. I was a sophomore in college at that time, or a junior technically. I was a year ahead, and I had a full-time job working for the college. I was a creative director for a specific department, and I dropped it all to pursue this YouTube as my job, my full-time job, and that was almost three years ago. And I've, I've run this business, and I've had these amazing experiences like VidCon and traveling to meet friends and, and, and people that do YouTube and working with these awesome brands and getting the plaques and the plushes and it's been this amazing experience that I dreamed of my entire life and I owe it all to this cancer story this cancer experience that I that I went through every year of my life since fifth grade I did YouTube in some form or fashion every single year in fifth grade I started with Minecraft pocket edition videos I would make videos just like Jack Frost Miner and everybody else that did pocket edition and then I would do you know Happy Wheels videos and cool math games videos and then in middle school I would do Ark Survival Evolved videos and COD videos. In high school, I would do Fortnite videos and I would do NBA 2K videos. I would do all these videos to try to blow up. I was pursuing it for literally over a decade because I knew that, that was that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to entertain and be an inspiration to people. I wanted to tell this story and I wanted to inspire people and show them that you can come from quite literally nothing and have you know everything in, in your own mind. Being content with what you have is, is, is a mindset and you have to get into that mindset. I still use my cancer experience as the biggest motivator for my content and my, my passions in business and my passions in expanding what I do. When you're as sick as I was as a kid, my entire like formative little years, you really understand how much we as normal people, not sick people, take for granted. We take our basic health for granted and when you don't have health, you don't have anything. So like I remember vowing as like my little eight and a half, nine year old self to never take anything for granted. And I wanted to live life to the fullest potential. I wanted to turn the sliders all the way up on everything. I wanted to fully and just entirely feel every human emotion. I wanted to love, I wanted to cry, I wanted to hate, I wanted to scream, I wanted to be happy, I wanted to entertain. I wanted to be that person that people could watch and be inspired by. I wanted to do something amazing and fantastic. I wanted to read, I wanted to travel, I wanted to explore, I wanted to expand, I wanted to write, I wanted to play games, I wanted to paint, I wanted to do every single thing possible in life, every single venture, some way or another, because I knew how much life meant, because I was so close to not having life. I wanted it all, and thanks to all of you, you wonderful people, I'm able to do those things. Like, I'm literally able to live that life, and now it's time for me to be the inspiration. I want to inspire people to do their passions. Whatever it is, it's not just YouTube. Above all, I want you to live without fear. You know, there's an old saying, what would you do if you woke up tomorrow and fear didn't exist? What is the first thing you would do? And when you think of that first thing, do it now.
because if fear didn't exist, it, nothing would be holding you back. If you didn't have trepidations over something, nothing would hold you to where you're at. You would explore and expand and do everything in your passions, but fear and anxieties and trepidations and sadness hold you back. You just can't let that happen now. And now I'm in the position to give back like I wanted to as a kid. I really want to give back to my friends and family and to other people who are experiencing the cancer battle that I went through. Now that I'm, you know, financially able and and like more than able to do so and have this amazing community behind me, I want to do something great for everybody that that watches this or everybody that is dealing with something like I dealt with. I want to help. As a kid, you you obviously want to help, but you don't have the means to. And as a teenager, it's the same thing. But now I'm an adult. I have the means to help and I want to. This is my help. This is my great purpose is to help and inspire people that dealt with cancer or dealing with cancer or any hardship in life. You know, please take everything that I've said in this video as utter motivation to do what you want to do. Trying to start a channel or if you want to be a dancer or if you want to be an actor or if you want to be a writer, a poet, a soldier, an astronaut, a NASCAR driver, a football player, anything that you want to do, you can do it. You will do it. You just have to try. You will do extraordinary things when you realize that fear is a man-made construct. We're only born with two fears, the fear of loud sounds and the fear of heights, okay? Every other fear is learned. Every other anxiety is crafted by society. You can do it. You will do it. I came from literally nothing. I was poor before chemo. My parents came from poor families, literally in the middle of the Appalachian Mountains. I'm talking about like redneck stuff. I come from nothing. And then I had less than nothing because I didn't even have my health. I, you know, I was sick with cancer for my like five years of my childhood. And through all of that, I stared adversity and doubt and hate and even death in the face. And I literally looked at it and I said, not today, not today. Use that exact vibration, use that exact moment in your personal life, even with you guys, to any situation you have. Not today. Do not be controlled by those things they will hold you back. And the day you realize that you don't have to be controlled by it is the day that your life really, really starts. Thankfully for me, it started when I was a little kid. So I've been able to live life to the fullest. I've traveled, I've seen places, I've done things, I've helped amazing things. I can do my dream and help people. I've expanded, I've explored, I paint, I write, I read. I have the best friends and family in the world. I have the best fan base in the world. I've cultivated an amazing following that are, that are just fantastic. Like I love you all. I've done this from tenacity, the addiction, to wanting to pursue life to the fullest. And if you do that same energy, you will do the same thing. Thank you all so much for this incredible journey. If I've inspired just at least one person with this video, then my goal is done. And if I've helped at least one person, you know, with cancer or going through cancer with a family member in this video, that's that's done. That's my goal. I've, I've that's my great victory, okay? You can't live life hiding behind fear. That's the message I want to convey. And you can come from nothing like me. You can make whatever you want to out of life because life is really short. Shorter than you ever think it would be, okay? Okay, you have to make the most of it and you have to pursue passion because what is life if you don't do that? A man can never sail the oceans and see the world if he's too scared to lose sight of the coastline. It's one of my favorite quotes right there. I know what it's like to come from nothing. I know what it's like to have nothing, to feel nothing, to be in pain. I've been there, I've done it, I've succeeded through all of it, and you can do it too, I promise. I promise you can. With family, with God, with friends, literally, it's all possible. You just have to believe in yourself and do it. Like I said, you just have to start. I hope this video gets shared thousands of times to as many people as possible. I want this to be my biggest video of all time. I want this to be my, my greatest example of all time. This is what I want to be remembered for and known for is the, just the kid that did it. And I want to inspire other people, other kids, other, other adults, anybody, literally anybody that they can do it too. Thank you for watching, like, comment, share, do all that stuff. Let's boost this algorithm stuff. Whatever works, works, I guess. I love and appreciate you all. And I just, I genuinely thank you for all that you've done for me. You've given me the life that I've dreamed of, the life that I worked for. And I, I cannot thank you all enough. I'm so grateful I get to do my passion as my job. And I really wish that I could just go tell, you know, little three, four, five, six, seven, eight year old Jared that he would succeed and it would be all okay. You, you would succeed. I just want to, I just want to give that kid a fist bump and tell him that it's going to be all right. You, you stick with it. You never, you never give up and never fail. You never gave up and you never bent the knee. And that's what matters. Thank you all for everything and have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day.